Hi guys, it's Liam from Lanterna with the second part of my IV geography video on managing population change. And if you haven't seen the first part, uh, by all means check that out. That was all about China uh, and one of the most famous antinatalist policies in human history. That was uh, the one child policy of 1979. Today we're going to have a little look at the other side of the coin, looking at um, a famous pronatalist policy. And just to recap what pronatalism is all about, it's all about encouraging families to increase their um, total fertility rate, to increase the sizes of individual families. And the reason um, a country might be enabling or enacting policy based um, on, um, on pronatalism it's because they're worried about an aging population or the ability of a population um, to, set, to kind of sustain itself into the future. As you have more and more um, individuals in that older dependent group, you need to sort of kind of future proof that economically active population and um, a policy of pronatalism is one way of trying to do that. In this little video, uh, we're looking kind of look at France uh, and the Code de, de la Famille. Um, the Code de la Famille was a policy um, that began in 1952, post-war, um, and over the last 70 years or so, it's been changed a little bit, but it's, it's always been based on encouraging um, more births through an incentive-based policy. So let's talk about it. Uh, and the first thing to note um, is the paternity and maternity-based um, incentives that the government provides um, families with. This particular version I'm looking at is the kind of mid-2000s variation in terms of the specifics. It was one of the bigger changes in the Code de la Famille, um, and that was based on the fact that um, the French government realised that the um, total fertility rate um, within the average family was dwindling compared to um, the rest of the European Union. France at the time had one of the lowest total fertility rates, um, and that was an issue, and these, um, these incentives um, are the way that the government decided to try and fix that. Uh, and longer paternity and maternity leave is one way they try to do that. For you guys who don't know what paternity leave or maternity leave is, is that time that a, a parent gets off from work in order to care for their child. And that comes with some um, benefits in terms of um, a certain level of income. But the, for the first child um, in France, you get 20 weeks. Um, but as you have more and more children, that increases gradually until you get to about 40 weeks for a third child. Now that's almost a year. That's a pretty big incentive. If you know you're going to have um, the income security, as well as the time to look after another child, you might be more likely to take that step to increase the total fertility rate of your family um, in line with what the government is aiming for you guys um, or for that family to do. The second point um, is highly related. This is all about higher child benefits. Again, a financial incentive. Um, the more children you have, the more your, in your income is supplemented. We know um, that in a lot of these um, MEDCs, the cost of actually raising a child um, is increasing. That's in terms of not only childcare, but also education, healthcare, food, etc., etc. So actually having um, a little bit more money in that in that um, family pocket, in that purse, might enable or encourage a family to expand in size. Um, just add that extra five percent. Okay, that might tip them over and, and make them want to have another child. Um, in line with that as well, we've got these improved tax allowances. The bigger family you have, the better tax allowances you get. Again, that's a financial incentive um, that can help, um, again, tip the scales um, in, in, uh, in favour of um, having another child when maybe you weren't planning on based on um, the financial limitations um, you were experiencing at the time. And this one's uh, a kind of woman um, or mother specific, and this is uh, improved pension schemes. In fact, the bigger your family, the earlier uh, the woman in the, in the family can retire, not the mother. And because she's got a bigger family, the government recognises that and decides to reward her based on the fact that um, her family is slightly larger than um, another. Um, this one's a little bit more specific. So this is less like overtly um, financial, but this is another um, small incentive that might encourage a family to, to um, grow in size. It's a reduction in public transport for three child families. Okay, 30% reduction. That's pretty significant. Um, in a lot of these um, French cities, public uh, transport plays a central role in commuting, in daily life. This again is another thing um, to add to the list of um, benefits. Um, and then finally, um, the provision of creches and day services. So creches, day services is all about childcare, looking after children when the parents have to work. That is one of the biggest issues that, that families face when they want to have a bigger family. How are they going to look after a child um, when they need to work or when they when they can't afford um a nanny um, or, or, or something similar. The French government recognises that and provides um, discounted creches and, and day services to enable families to take that step if they want to. 
Um, the final point is preferential treatment in allocation of government housing. Um, so if you're a family and you're looking for um, government house, the bigger you are, um, the more likely you're going to, to, to have your needs fulfilled. You are kind of bumped up the list in terms of um, the allocation of government housing. And that's a really big thing. Obviously, housing is super important to um, living standards. Um, if you have a bigger family, that's only going to benefit you because you're able to better fulfill and better maintain that living standard that you're looking for. Uh, but did it work? This is just the last kind of um, two or three minutes on um, actually kind of evaluating the policy. You guys know as well as I do, um, it's really important that we um, evaluate when we're writing case studies and writing essays. By all means, check out um, one of the first videos I made, and that was based on how to write a really good geography essay. These are a couple of points you guys can throw in um, if you're thinking about um, using this as a particular case study in a natalism question. It might be on a, it might be a 15 marker based on um, to what extent, um, what, uh, name a, name a pronatalist policy um, or evaluate the consequences of a pronatalist policy or um, to what extent did a pronatalist policy in a country or a case study work. These are some of the points that you guys can bring in. And these aren't exhaustive, by all means do your own research and, and check out some of the ideas that I've briefly mentioned today. Uh, but these are just some of the points uh, I want to make in terms of um, this particular pronatalist policy. Yeah, again, the, the first kind of main thing to mention is the actual physical results. So I, I said that we were kind of focusing on the mid-2000s. In 2006, um, France overtook Ireland to become the highest fertility nation. It was a, The total fertility rate was about 2 per, wim, per woman. Um, that's just below that 2.12 um, level of uh, the replacement level. And so that's a really big in increase. There were over 800,000 births that year. Yeah, that was the highest since 1981. Clearly, okay, there was an improvement in terms of um, the fertility rate in that country. And that was what the overall goal was. So there is some, some degree of success there that we can, um, can deem in terms of the Code de la Famille of the mid-2000s. Possible limitations, though, and again, these are things we've always got to consider. Was it immigration that, that caused um, the increase in births? Um, we already mentioned that France was one of the, the lowest um, or the least fertile um, country in terms of its total fertility rate. Um, in, in this period, 2004 was one of the last big expansions in the European Union. Um, some of those countries that um, gained accession, ascension um, had a higher total fertility rate. Of course, there was a lot of immigration across um, the entirety of Europe. Could some of those people account for that spike in births and, and that spike in total fertility rate? Or was it the actual improved economic climate? Okay, during that period, France was kind of undergoing um, a boom. Um, it, it's quite hard for us to distinguish whether it was just these individual incentives that we've um, discussed a second ago or was, was it the overall economic climate that made a child or a bigger family more affordable for the average French family. Again, these are things to consider. By all means, check out some more ideas, um, but I'm going to kind of leave it there. That's the second part. Um, thanks again for, for, for tuning in. I've got loads more videos coming. I've got a couple um, on mega cities um, in a bit. Um, beyond that, if you guys have any questions, by all means, always email me, liam at and um, head out to our website. We've got loads of um, free guides. We've got a, a, a brand new um, blog section on, on, on all of these kind of ideas. By all means, check that out. And if you guys want more specific help, uh, we've also got all those tutors available to assist you. Um, but I'm going to leave it there. Thanks, thanks so much, guys, for, for tuning in.